Good morning all, it's Postbag, and I just want to say another quick thanks to all the new Patreon subscribers who have come in since my last Postbag, a huge additional flurry of uh, subscribers or patrons. Uh, also thanks of course to uh, the previous patrons, all patrons in fact, and I'll put uh, a link to my Patreon account uh, at the top of the description, and Patreon of course massively supports uh, this Postbag feature. Um, I won't start buying more expensive items, I'll just buy more of the cheap stuff. Right, let's get on with the opening. Right, let's start with this one. I can feel some coiled up wire in there. I'm just going to cut it carefully because I'm not sure how near the edge it is. And it's these. And these look a bit strange because there's fabric with bits of wire going into them and then some cable. They're actually USB heaters. So there are two heating elements here. Now from my mat you can see that they're 210 uh, millimeters long and about what 75 wide. Uh, you can see the copper I assume strips running down there and then there are uh, bridges across which uh, are the heating elements. So you get two of these. Uh, these terminate in little, oh no, I'm not quite sure what the dimensions of those, four point something millimeters. I think these are these mini uh, DC power connectors. And then you get a USB cable with uh, two of these little power adapters here. So we can run both of these from one USB port. Now this purchase came about because I was looking at this. This is Maplin's Volcanic Heat Heated Fleece Vest which at £10 I thought might be worth a punt. But reading further down, it runs from 6AA batteries, which is quite convenient, but it only runs for about two hours. And I was thinking, well, this is quite handy. I'm someone who feels the cold, so it'd be quite fun to play with. But what would be a better battery technology? Well, of course, lithium. And uh, what's the maximum number of lithium cells you can get in one pack? Well, it'd be one of these eight cell power banks. And then I thought, well, it's got to be USB. So let's plug these plugs into these sockets and uh, take this off and plug this into a power bank. I've just gone and got one that happens to be fully charged. And see, yeah, that's powered on. See how quickly these things start getting warm. Can't feel much at the moment. Let's just do a quick temperature test. Um, okay, so that's about 20 degrees. Is it warming up? Hard to say at the moment. I'll just leave them on for a bit. Well, this is interesting. These aren't really warming up that much. They've warmed up a little bit, 24. But it seems what's happening is the heat that these are generating just is immediately dissipating out into the air and uh, not accumulating. So maybe these only really work if they're trapped inside fabric so that the, uh, the heat can't escape. So let's try that. So let's put one of them inside the sleeve of my um, fleece here. That's if it'll go in, but it won't. And just leave it in there for a bit and see if that starts to warm up because it in free air they just they're just not warming up. Let's try that. Well I think I may have spotted a problem and that is that the power bank's actually switched itself off. Because it obviously doesn't detect um, a very heavy load, and so it doesn't stay on for very long. Uh, I'm gonna have to switch to a power bank that has uh, a mode where you can tell it not to switch off. It always seems that I come back to this power bank ultimately because this one has all the features. Oh, it's only got 6% charge in it. Well, never mind, that's enough. Uh, I think if you press and hold, you can go through to auto switch off, do it again, and it goes through to not switch off. So let's wait till it says not.
not switch off, so now it won't switch off. Okay, let's use this power bank. Uh, this is actually a better colour match as well, isn't it? Oh, we're down to 5% now, I better work quickly. Well, they're not getting very hot. That's warm. This one feels warmer. Let's put the uh, thermometer on it again. That one there is reading... Oh, 27 that's reading now, that's gone up a bit. And this one's reading 29 or 30. So you're certainly not going to burn yourself with these things. But yeah, they could actually keep you nice and toasty warm. Hmm. Now one problem is that you've got to secrete all this wiring. Wow, that's actually really warm. This wire must be very thin because that's getting quite warm. Well, I suppose if you if you run that up your clothing, that could uh, help keep you warm. But yeah, these could get... That's ridiculous. Why is that getting warm? That should be stone cold. Uh... Yeah, so these are quite good. I, I quite like these. It's just a bit impractical, really, with all this stuff and power banks. There are better ways to keep warm, aren't there? So this item is one pair of 5 volt USB heating element film heater, 6 by 20 centimetres. They're a bit bigger than that if you include the fabric for electric warm feet warmer. Oh, I didn't think about warming my feet. Uh, they're just $4.23, free shipping, uh, Quotop. 2014 and next up is this this came in just this morning hmm. what is it it is ah yes oh that's very small it's uh, a little power meter electrical parameter tester which has volts, amps, watts, I think, uh, accumulated amp hours, all sorts of stuff. Let's power it up. So I'm going to use one of these uh, CCTV style, I don't know why they call them CCTV, probably because that's where they're used most, uh, terminal block to a 2.1 millimeter uh, power connector. Now that will go on black and red of the smaller wires. Black and red, the larger wires, are for current measurements, and you can see right next to the plug there uh, is a small resistor let's get in a bit closer yeah that's an R025 so what's that 25 milliohms and that's for measuring uh, the small voltage across that and then the uh, microcontroller here which let's take a quick look at that that's an ST microcontroller that will be measuring uh, the current on flowing through these two so I'm gonna put power to black and red on these uh, just a couple of other things on here. There's a voltage regulator here. Uh, now, in the instructions, this says... Uh, let me just find it. Yes, using an isolated power supply, external voltage of between 4 and 20 volts. Uh, so I'm assuming that then that's regulated down to 3.3 and the microcontroller is running at 3.3 volts. But let's put power on and find out. Now I've wired the uh, yellow in with the red because yellow is almost certainly the measuring wire. Uh, so if I just put red and black on there, probably you will get zero volts on the display. So let's plug in my 12 volts or thereabouts from my solar power system. And now we're getting, that's a little bit cut off there on the left, isn't it? 12.94 uh, volts. Now the reason I bought this is because this would appear to be OLED. And I've not seen an OLED version of these before. I've seen LED and LCD. Uh, this also has lots of things on it. It's got um, volts. Uh, it's got, well, that's volts measured on the yellow wire. So you don't have to put the yellow wire on the input uh, voltage. You can put that somewhere else. It's got amps. It's got watt hours and it's got amp hours. It's got temperature. Now that appears to be measured by this little bead uh, thermistor down here, which is marked RT so uh, we could try warming that up or actually I'll get some freezer spray and cool that down in a minute uh, so that's showing 21 degrees which would be about right I've got the heating on at the moment uh, we've got watts there so that's instantaneous immediate watts and elapsed time and that's just gone up to one minute interesting let's get that freezer spray right so it's saying 21 degrees let's cool down the thermistor Yeah, that's pretty cool. Minus 16 degrees. <laughs> and that immediately starts climbing up once the uh, ice melts on the thermistor. Yeah, well, that seems to work. And it's not just one of these ones that measures the internal temperature of the microcontroller, which I feel are never particularly accurate. 
Although, of course, you are only measuring the internal temperature of this whole module. How useful that would be uh, is open to question. You could, I suppose, of course, take that thermistor out and uh, put it on the end of some bits of wire. But yeah, that works well. Now, with these things, you get these somewhat confusing diagrams about how to wire them up if you want, for example, uh, one power supply uh, powering your load and you want to measure current and voltage running around this circuit, but you want a separate power supply powering the little meter, then there's a, a circuit connection diagram if you're using just one power supply and you want the meter to be running off that same power supply, because that limits it uh, to between 4 and 20 volts. Now they've also got a diagram here, which is quite nice, uh, if you're using it in conjunction with a DC to DC converter, a buck converter, presumably, where you can take um, the main power supply, which might be a higher voltage, 33 volts they've got listed here, uh, but convert it down and then use it to drive the little meter. So uh, that's a handy diagram to have as well. So this is definitely OLED. I mean, it's fairly obviously OLED. Let's see if the camera will focus on it right close up. Right, that's about the best I can get. Um, it's definitely OLED because of that line down there. You couldn't do that um, on... Well, LCD would probably have separate fields for all these parameters. LED, of course, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that. OLED is just a massive matrix of dots. Now, one thing that's a bit off with this is that the, uh, the whole OLED has been put on a bit wonky. It's all tilted over down on the left. I think I might take this apart, actually, and uh, have a look inside. It seems that the circuit board is held in with little ears uh, going into these side pieces. So if I just bend that out, perhaps if I bend this one out and pull on this wire, I might better get that out. No, nope, perhaps it's glued in. A bit of leverage required, I think. And uh, it's out. And yes, you can see that the uh, OLED module is uh, just stuck on the top of this piece of foam. Shame they didn't stick it on quite square. There's the flexible PCB uh, running back onto the main PCB. And yeah, we have a microcontroller, uh, whatever that is. Uh, what might that be? Op-amp, memory, probably an op-amp. Voltage regulator there, that's probably what defines the 4 to 20 volts. Probably a 3.3 output thermistor sitting up at that end. Um, there's also a switch here, which I didn't notice, so let's press that. And that makes amp hours and watt hours flash on and off. So maybe that's a hold thing. You can hold it, press it again, and it appears to reset them. These are cumulative counters, so you can see the logic in being able to uh, reset those. I'm just wondering how quickly I could lash up a circuit to um, get some current flowing through here. Right, a quick and dirty lash up um, of this circuit where I'm running everything off my incoming power source. Now this is flickering now, but that's only because the camera is seeing that bright light and has changed its um, shutter speed. And so this is appearing to uh, flicker. So we've got 12 volts there, 1.8 amps, uh, 22 watts, which is about right, because that's a 21 watt brake lamp bulb. Uh, temperature's not changed because that's the temperature on the back of the board and we're getting some accumulated uh, amp hours and watt hours there on the display. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, just uh, wanted to see if that reset of the... Oh, that's funny. Now, why did that... Oh, that's actually recalled the previous value. Look at that. That started a new count. And I can go back to the old count. So maybe it has two memory sets. I really should read the manual, shouldn't I? But that looks quite fun. Ah, here we are. Button function instruction. In the display interface, click the button to switch the data set. So yeah, there appear to be two data sets. Keep pressing the button to clear the accumulated data to zero. Excellent. What's this? Long-term use may appear. Tiny error when it measures small current. Dis the screen displays AAA. Hmm, what's that? Actually, that looks like when you get a current offset, so that when there's no current flowing and it shows something other than zero, you can hold the button for a long time. It'll show AAA, and that 
that's some sort of calibration to reset the current measurement uh, if it's drifted off and it's talking about because of component aging and tolerances and all that sort of thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Just a bit tricky reassembling this, trying to get the switch to go through the hole in the front glass and get this um, tab out so that I can push the circuit board back in to place. And that wasn't too bad. There we are. And the switch is still accessible. Yeah, that's a really neat little unit. Let's see where I got it. So that's this. It's the uh, multifunctional 7-in-1 electrical parameter voltage current LED meter, even though it's not LED, it's actually OLED. Um, that's $11.94 Canadian, so that's uh, US $8.64. And that came from Kido Do 2015. Right, just one more, I think. Uh, I think I've used up a fair amount of time already. Now this is almost certainly Alice, because Alice normally writes electronic parts. But look, it's from Mr. Li Tan Sheng. So is Alice really Li Tan Sheng? Maybe. So this is, yes, that's correct. Five pieces of this uh, USB power bank tester. Are these actually joined together? They are. I'm gonna to have to actually snap these apart, which is quite tricky because the resistors are kind of getting in the way of me. Oh, no, you can do it. But uh, I thought I'd get five because this switch is really hopelessly under spec for switching between one amp and two amps. Uh, I think just one of the resistors is in circuit for one amp and then the other resistor is switched in by this switch. But this very quickly um, gets very ropey and um, is unreliable. And that's why I bought five of these, because I think what I'll do is I'll wire two of them just as one amp uh, loads and then the other three as two amp loads. And I won't bother using the switch. I'll just use, um, I'll mark them and then use them uh, separately, one amp or two amp, depending on what test I want to do. I'm just wondering whether uh, you could wire these in some other cunning configuration. Uh, you could get it to do half an amp, couldn't you? Because you could wire them in series. But I don't, I think that's it. You've either got one resistor for one amp, two resistors in parallel for two amps, or put them in series for half amp. I think that's all you could, uh, all you could do. Uh, yes, if they're in one amp mode, it's a green LED. If it's two amps, it's red. That switch seems all right at the moment. So in one amp, oh yeah, that resistor is getting very hot. That resistor is just passively warm because it's sitting next to this one. These do get very hot, so you don't want to be, you wouldn't want to use this as a clothes warmer because <laughs> this could cause serious burns. Yeah, that's getting very hot. And let's put it in two amps and see if it puts them in uh, parallel, uh, puts the two in parallel, which would mean this one would start getting hot as well. Yes, I think it is. That's very hot. And yes, that's starting to get very hot as well. So I think it's a simple case of the switch just adds the other resistor in parallel. Uh, yeah, they're both they're both hot now. And uh, they smell rather nice. Mmm, when they're new and all this uh, paint starts burning, they give off rather a nice burning smell. I like that. So what I want to do is I want to do a full load test on power banks. Now this power bank says on the left socket 2.1 amps and on the right socket uh, one amp. So that's how I've switched these two units. Uh, that's two amps and that's one amp. And in fact, it's not holding. It seems to not like this load. So it's not staying on. Let's turn one of them, let's put them both on one amp. And that's staying on. But if you put uh, the one plugged into the 2.1 amp socket, which one was it again? yes, this one here, into two amp mode, then the power bank shuts down. Now I've just received a power bank that has three sockets on it. Um, I'll have to read the spec to see what the maximum current is. But uh, yes, this will be a very good test to see if the power bank uh, can supply the full current on all sockets. A lot of these sockets are now rated for 2.4 amps. 
so you wouldn't be able to test that with these testers. But if it can't handle 2.1 at the same time as 1, then you'd have to mark the power bank down for uh, maximum current problems. Uh, well, now so far, these have the switch has actually held up reasonably well. So maybe I'll just leave hardwiring the switch as an option uh, later on if these start to get uh, the switch starts to get a bit flaky. Perhaps I'll use them initially with the switch and then uh, leave that as an option. Right, let's have a look at where these came from. Alice, I think. Uh, yep, yeah, this is five pieces of USB load resistor, power resistors, mobile power aging, all that nonsense. Uh, the sellers away uh, until February the 16th. A lot of the Chinese sellers are away at the moment because, of course, it's Chinese New Year. Uh, $6.05 for five of these things, so they're super cheap. And yes, this did indeed come from Alice uh, 110 1983. And so these are today's post bag items. Cheerio.